Yes, ma'am. Okay. So good evening, dear friends. A very, very warm welcome to all of you, all the friends who have joined all across the geography. Today, our icon is none other than my very, very dear friend, Professor Dr. Rajeshri Katke. So those who are in the uh, constantly in touch with me or seeing regularly my programs, they all know that me and Rajeshri had done lot and lot of programs Raj, uh, because she's Professor Dr. Rajeshri, but I always call her, uh, call her Rajeshri. She's very close to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So... Mm -hmm. Sorry, sorry for that. Huh? So Rajeshri is very close to me. So always as, as like me, Rajeshri is also very much keen for the knowledge sharing. So friends, last two weeks, we are doing the some discussion mode. So today, uh, only three days back, me and Rajeshri had a conversation that she is going to, uh, uh, she had read something very good about the vulval lesion in the menopause. So I requested Dr. Rajeshri to take a lecture on this and we are really grateful to her that she is happily accepting always the, our invitation. So a very, very warm regards and warm welcome to you, Professor Dr. Rajeshri, to in, in my you, show. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Thank you. So uh, yeah, over to you, Nishan. Nishan. Yes, ma'am. So yes. let me introduce uh, Dr. Rajeshri Katke, ma'am, uh, who is icon for this uh, conversation with Dr. Ritu, ma'am. And the topic is vulval lesions in menopause. So Dr. Rashri Katke Mem is a well-known professor and head of the unit of Grand Government Medical College in Mumbai. Mem has been medical teacher for UG and PG students for since 24 years. Mem is ex-superintendent of Kama and Alvarez Hospital in Mumbai. Mem has published 100 plus publications, 275 plus citations in national and international journals, and 160. A plus global reads. And uh, as we uh, all know, Dr. Ritu Mem is uh, founder and CEO of 360 Degree Healthcare Studio, uh, consultant and Inamdar multi specialty hospital in Pune. Mem is infertility rest to baby specialist, NUHS from Singapore, co founder of EMM and a board member of SWWC. So uh, I welcome uh, Dr. Rajshri Mem for today's topic on Shield Karai. And we are glad to have you on our platform for today's uh, webinar. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, yes. Thank uh, so you, friends, Dr. Friends, before Dr. Rajshri will start her yes. presentation, so as like always, all of you, those who are having any queries, please start writing in the chat box. Because once we finish the show later on, I received so many messages in the YouTube and in the inbox, ma'am, what's the answer? What's the answer? So please be attentive and start writing your questions now only. So because Dr. Rajeshri is expert for this, uh, treating all the cancers and all the lesions. I am not the expert for that. She is the expert for that. So whatever the questions, please start writing now. So later on, she will be happy to answer all that. Yeah, over to you, Dr. Rajeshri. Once again, a very, very warm welcome. Hmm. Thank you very much, Dr. Ritu. And uh, Nishant, Ritu always speaks. She's a friend, so she speaks um, very <laughs> magnifying and kind words. Actually, uh, Dr. Ritu herself is a... Uh, very, I mean, academically strong also, and she has she is very keen in knowledge sharing platform, and very few people uh, actually uh, they do the you know uh, it's like a, uh, always she says Jai Mata Di. I said she is the real uh, pujari pujari of uh, Ma Saraswati, and uh, it is very nice and uh, contributing lots of. Uh, good thing for the fraternity. So with these uh, kind words, I would like to share the screen and thank you very much for uh, uh, inviting me here. I'll just... Uh, thank you, screen. thank you, dear Adishri. Rekha ji has also joined. Rekha ji, welcome. Rekha ma'am, welcome. Uh, uh, thank so... you, thank you. And it's <laughs> a pleasure to hear you, Dr. Rajshri. It's a pleasure. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. All God's grace. Uh, so this is I'm talking about in short about the vulvar lesions, which is the you know rare uh, rarely touched topic uh, for this, and uh, I'll just go with the slideshow. One minute. Uh, why the slideshow is not happening here? From beginning. 
Yeah, I think slideshow is not happening here. Okay. Ma'am, uh, kindly uh, reshare it, ma'am. Uh, Achha, resume slideshow. Ha, yeah, it's there. Can you see now, Sayite? Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. It's clear. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Ma, so, let's have a summary of the conditions and the symptoms. And this is very important to know nowadays. I mean, even post-COVID session, we are getting many patients with the vulval uh, itching, burning and all. So one is a lichen sclerosis where you will get an intense itching, soreness, burning can be, it can be asymptomatic also. The most important thing with all the gynecologists we are facing the problem is with the genitourinary syndrome where you are getting vaginal dryness, dyspareunia, vaginal itching, vaginal discharge, vaginal pain and the urological symptoms. These are the symptoms, patients, they are coming to us and these patients, you know, quite uh, uh, repeatedly they are coming with this and uh, then we have to treat them and uh, satisfy them even at the older age and it becomes sometimes very difficult to respond to the treatment. Then comes to the contact dermatitis where there will be an intense vaginal itching, soreness and the vaginal burning. Lichen simplex, intractable itching during sleep. Lichen planus, that is the one thing which affects with the skin and the mucous membrane itself and the soreness, burning and the dyspareunia. Then comes to the vulval intraepithelial neoplasia and Paget's disease and then the CA vulva. So this is the spectrum where we can look for. So many of the things, conditions, these patients, they are coming to us. So let's uh, have a look in that, what into the menopause. Because of the, you know, menopause, uh, there is a more FSH, less of the steroid level, and there will be a thinning of the um, vaginal epithelium, then vulval skin uh, thinning, and the uh, pH will be again, you know, it gets disturbed, the microflora gets disturbed, and with that, we will have a symptoms of the vulva vaginal atrophy, include the irritation, vaginal dryness, dysuria, dysperonia, and abnormal vaginal discharge. Atropic vaginitis is the term when used when inflammation accompanies with the atropic changes resulting in patchy redness and tenderness in the, of the vaginal introitis. The vulvo vaginal atrophy without inflammation, the tissues tend to be very thin, pale and dry. Sometimes you will get the fissuring at the posterior portrait and it becomes very difficult, you know, uh, to have a uh, moisture uh, there. So the treatment is local estrogen treatment. All we know, we have a uh, conjugated estrogen, then we will have the another brands, then uh, ethinyl estradiol. These are the things where we can apply locally for that. Uh, then comes to the lichen simplex. I have taken this because most of the patient they are coming with and uh, sometimes the patient they are coming with all this and the patient turn out to be vulval intraepithelial neoplasm or the CA vulva and all. So any color changes or any itching is there, excessive scratching and dribbing of an area affected with an underlying conduction. These are the contact dermatitis or the neuropathic pruritis. In that, we have to consider by with the uh, lichen simplex. And this is, you can see there is a, one minute, uh, just... Uh, See what it happens in that there is a chronic inflammation is there and sclerosing and these are the uh, white ivory white patches. This is a cl clear picture of the lichen sclerosis. The topical application of the hydrocortisone or the steroids is the one reason where you can uh, give in that. Biopsy generally it is not recommended but suppose the patient is coming with the non-healing or the non-responding lesions due to the uh, you know, uh, persistent thing in a 4 to 5 percent of increased risk of the malignant transformation, then one can go for the vulval biopsy. Then comes to the vulval dermatitis. We feel that ki while, you know, uh, learning, teaching, we feel array, this is the very, uh, you know, common condition and all, but it becomes very difficult because the, these... Uh, uh, because these patients, they are coming with the irritant, you know, uh, if they are applying the soap, different part of the soap, fragrance is there, overwashing or the urine or the fecal incontinence or the urinary incontinence, then it comes to the, you know, the point is that there will be, a, the skin will be markedly red, swollen. And there will be erosions and ulceration. If suppose the patient, they are coming with the old age with all these things with the diaper, rashes, irritations and all. So low potency topical steroids is the one thing where you can 
uh, use for that. You can give an antihistaminic also in that. See how it is. We are seeing all the patients with the contact dermatitis. It, 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 it goes with the, you know, prura, pores, mons, libia majora, minora, and the inner side of the thighs. It becomes very difficult for them, you know, with the incontinence of the urine also. Then comes to the lichen planus. Lichen planus present with the each and the pain, but basically it also affects the mucosal skin, that is the vagina and the mouth sometimes. So this is very important. I have collected these pictures because we are seeing, though rarely, but we are seeing such cases in that. You can see there is an intense scarring is there. There is a whitening is there. There is a congestion is that. This is a lichen simplex, but in the planus, what it happens, it gives an ulceration and redness of the mucosa, uh, mucosa. It affects the mucosa and it can affect the mucosa even with the mouth and uh, vaginal also. So what are the strategies to reduce the vulva vaginal irritation is that eliminate the aggravating factors, avoid scratching and rubbing if possible. It is very, very difficult to say avoid scratching and rubbing, but still the patient comes with, you know, irritation marks, scratching marks, then emollient or the petroleum jelly that can be used in that. Wash the vulva with water and avoid the use of the soap. There is one, uh, they, I mean, there are uh, uh, many brands, they are coming with, uh, you know, soaps and all. So, I think one should not uh, use too much of soap for that, that cause the dryness of this thing. And that can, uh, you know, uh, the pH will also get altered with that. So use white unscented soft toilet paper. Avoid using over the counter products for the genital area. That is a topical antifungal medicines or the doches. Then seboric dermatitis. This is also, you know, inguinal, crural, and intralibillion. The hair bearing areas, there you will get a seboric dermatitis. There we can use that antifungal cream and all that. So this is how where you will get with the seboric dermatitis. Then comes to the pemphigoid very rarely and pemphigus vulgarilis. Uh, uh, that uh, such patients, but they are they are going to the skin. But suppose such patients come to us, we should uh, always look for that. And then comes to the most important part, which we are commonly, you know, coming with this, with the genital warts. This is the HPV infections. We have a 60 of the subtypes are there. 6 and 11, they may go into either involving the vagina, vulva and the surrounding area. But 16, 18, 31, 33, 42, 45, these are common with the cervical lesions. Then comes to the genital herpes simplex type 2. So condyloma acuminatum, HPV infections of the vulva are common uh, and clinical occurrence. Although there are more than 60 subtypes of the HPV, relatively few affect the vulva. So in that you will get a 6, 11 and 2 and cervix gets to 16, 18, 31, 35. So this is the classical picture of the genital warts and this is the classical picture of the herpes simplex, you know, uh, uh, where uh, these are the pictures in that. So then comes to the benign skin lesions. One is a seboric dermatitis, epidermal inclusion seeds, uh, sometimes you get, then moles are there, they are macule, papule and uh, these angiokeratomatous uh, uh, lesions are there. They are multiple red, purple, blue or blackish papules, then lipomas and the skin ties. So let's have a look at that, how the tumors of the vulva repair, I have classified according to the vulva epithelium, in which we will get the fibroepithelial polyps, that's like the skin tags, all of we, most of we are having, there is a, you know, uh, piled up epithelium and there are the skin tags, one tag is with the vulva and uh, that is also called as acrocordon. Then hydrodenoma, that is the tumors of the apocrine sweat glands, this, uh, we have seen a couple of cases of that. Then levomyoma. Everybody, I mean, uh, they know also they must be getting the, such patients with that. Treatment is only with the local excision. Lipoma, which is quite common. Then the fibroma from the, these are the exopytic projections and these are from the dense collagen fibers and the fibroblast tumor. Neurofibroma is the one thing where you will get with the benign 5% vulval lesions, but sometimes they can uh, become so much with the von Recklinghorn's disease. So, so these are the tumor with the epithelial and the connective tissue. Then comes to the vascular tumor, vascular malformation, hemangioma, cavernous hemangioma, angiokeratoma, lymphangioma, and Kaposi's sarcoma. Then endometriosis, uh, all we know in that, and the glandular cysts of the Bartholin duct cyst and the abscess in that. Then comes to the VIN, uh, which is the one. So we have seen with the epithelial tumor, uh, then vascular tumors and the, um, uh, you know, autoimmune disorders with that uh, lichen sclerosis, lichen planus, and then we will come to the vulval intraepithelial neoplasia. 
very difficult to diagnose, but sometimes on the biopsy, one can get with that. So uh, these are the neoplasia with the hyperplastic squamous lesion with atypia that is confined to the epithelium because it is an intraepithelial. So it is a mild dysplasia, uh, VIN1, VIN2, moderate dysplasia, VIN3, the severe dysplasia. The incidence of progression to a malignant invasive procedure is relatively low, 10 to 15 percent, and the time frame for the progression may span for the several years. So it is the one thing important is that whenever Mm, uh, you know, the development of the CA vulva is at the latter stages, but the patient, they are coming a very late stage to us because they are shy, they hide the things. Sometimes there is itching, itching. It has been treated by the uh, practitioners with the, you know, uh, not giving so much of attention. It might be have a VIN and all. So this is how uh, uh, patients are landing up with, with the, uh, you know, last stage, it's our stage three or stage four. So vulval in cancer is a disease affecting predominantly the elderly women. Median age is around 68 years. 5% of all female genital cancer is the uh, CA vulva. This is from my, uh, this thing picture from uh, where we have operated the cases. So what causes the vulval cancer? Carcinogenesis are felt currently exist mucosal HPV infection, then chronic inflammatory vulval dystrophies, autoimmune process, precancerous changes, lichen sclerosis, and persisting itching and scarring of the vulva. So these are the predisposing factors. Approximately 15% of the vulva cancer develop in women under the age 40. This is also one part of that is the, uh, because of the STI and HPV infection, all we are getting the patient which are having with the under 40s also. Condylometa or STD or STI, we won't say STD nowadays, but past in the past, low socioeconomic condition, nicotine abuse, smoking, alcohol, uh, itching, scaring, these are the one things uh, where you will get a incidence of the CA vulva. So what are the warning signs? There will be a discoloration or the changes in the vulval skin such as a color. There will be a lump or the growth on the vulva. There will be ulcerating or the warty growth, itching in the vulval area that does not go away. There will be bleeding. Skin, motion of skin can longitudinal strain produce. Uh, yeah, so these are the things in this. Which is what are the common sites? Uh, the lab, see, this is the common site. Yeah, you can. Uh, sorry, sorry to interrupt. Uh, yes, I please mute everyone except Dr. Rajeshree. Please mute everyone. Huh. Yes, yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you, Ritu. Uh, common sites, the labia majora, are the most common site of the vulval carcinoma. Involvement account of the 50% of the cases. Then comes to the minora, which is 15 to 20%. Then clitoris and the Bartholin's glands. Legions are multifocal also in that. So majora, then minora, then goes to the clitoris, urethral, uh, bartholins, and then comes to the multifocal in that. So the second type of the vulval cancer includes vulval in non-neoplastic epithelial disorders and advanced age that lead to a cellular atypia eventually to the cancerous stage. So sometimes very elderly women there, you will see that ki, uh, there is a non-neoplastic uh, epithelial disorder, but there will be a hyperplastic things and that will go to the uh, cancerous lesion. So diabetes, mellitus, hypertension, these are the uh, predisposing factor in that. So heavy cigarette smoking, chronic granulomatous disease and erythroplasia of purity, that is the one thing, uh, these are the uh, predisposing factors in that. Let's have a brief look of the, just I want to uh, highlight in that we have learned all these things in our first, second, third MBBS also in that. So basically the deep nodes and the superficial inguinal nodes, these are the one where they drain more, but they can go to the ILAC nodes and the paraortic nodes also. Here is the external ILAC. Why it is important to any case of the CA vula, the lymphatic spread is very very important in that because the lymphatics they get crossed to from one side to the another so lymphatic drainage of the vulva where the labia majora anterior half it goes to the opposite side in the mons pubis and the goes to the superficial inguinal lymph node the labia majora posterior half it goes to the deep inguinal then the external island the labia minora and prepuce of the clitoris that is the very important you will have a bilateral superficial inguinal lymph node and then they go to the uh, deep and all and glands and the clitoris, deep inguinal lymph node goes to the external leg. So there is a very complicated flow of the lymphatic drainage for the vulva in that. So basically, 
they can involve the bilateral lymph nodes and the spread will be much more in that. If you can see from here, it is going some of the, uh, it is going to the common eye uh, from the here limited. to the external eye like common internal eye like common eye like uh, groups in that. And this is the, you know, superficial inguinal and this is the deep inguinal lymph node. So this is how in that. So let's have a brief staging. Stage one tumor confined to the vulva. I don't go detail in that. One A is lesion, two layers, two centimeter, one B, more than two centimeter. A stage two is that with extension to the adjacent perineal structure, that is one third of the lower vagina and the lower urethra. But with a tumor of any size without extension to the adjacent perineal structures, but there will be a positive inguinal femoral lymph node. So in that one is the extension to the nearing structure. Second in that involvement of the lymph node. Then comes to this in stage 3A, one lymph node metastasis and there will be more extension. In 3B, there will be two or more than lymph node metastasis. In 3C, there will be extra capsular spread of the tumor. And four is distant, you know, it goes to the upper urethra, vaginal mucosa, bladder mucosa, rectal mucosa, or the fixed or ulcerated inguinofemoral lymph nodes. And 4B is the distant metastasis. So these are the things where I would like to explain in that case. See, see, we are getting the last stages of the cases in that. This is from my operation theater. I have operated in that. This is very close to the urethral. If you can see in that, see, this is the urethra. I have taken it all from this. And this is the normal skin and all those things. I and from the urethra, I have taken up the plane and uh, these things in that. Here, if you can see, this is the growth in that. This is the measuring tape. And this is a two centimeter margins one should keep. Minimum 18 millimeter because that is the one thing where you will not be in that. So classical specimen will be like this. Of course, this is we have done the uh, grafting and the plastic surgeon. Uh, they have done the skin grafting in that. But what I would like to... Uh, uh, tell you that okay, whenever we are doing either a vulvectomy or anything is that or any malignancy see that okay, there has to be a tumor free margin of two centimeter you know so that is how we should prevent the recurrence reoccurrence you can increase the survival rate in that this is from this uh, see this is the urethral, uh, this is the bulbous, uh, this thing and uh, all this and uh, the symmetry has to be maintained in that you should see the tumor free margins and all and clean and neat one because where we are doing such surgeries in that there are no vessels where you can ligate it or no? basically it's ooze and all uh, much more things but we use the good bipolar and uh, uh, right uh, you know uh, mapping of the disease and going into a right plane it minimizes the uh, bleeding uh, from the uh, tissues also. Uh, so this is a TNM. We will exclude in that. Uh, this is a um, uh, lichen sclerosis, highest rate of the invasion, around 4%. Okay. Let's come okay. to the okay. type. Okay. Of the okay. 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 Hmm. NCRT, uh, Dr. Poonam, please mute something. yourself. Dr. Poonam, please mute yourself. It is disturbing others. They Thank are you. Uh -huh. Diagnosis is very important in that following the warrants of IFC. See, whenever there is a change in the vulval epithelium in a postmenopausal woman, whenever there are warts are there and persistent warts, it is not, uh, you know, responding to the treatment or if you're getting any change into increase in the size or multiple lesions in that, then one should go for the biopsy. How the it spreads is direct extension, embolization, and of course, with the nodal spread. So what is the role of sentinel lymph node biopsy? See, primary squamous vulval cancers, cancers measuring less than 4 cm in a maximum dimension. And there is a unifocal cancer is that in that. You have to see for the sentinel lymph node biopsy. Uh, in that, actually, you can see that because in vulva, as there is a lymphatic crosses and the spread is going into the superficial inguinal and all, sometimes patients, they present with the big, big lymph nodes in that. Sometimes they are inflammatory sometimes they are not reactive also so if it is required you can do a biopsy of that also so incisional biopsy is the one thing where you can do from the interface between a normal and the abnormal epithelium you can take in that imaging modalities use of uh, ct scan mri required whenever required is a pet ct pet ct 
then comes to the excisional biopsy a biopsy was taken that includes all of the abnormal epithelium but does not provide a tumor free uh, zone of 1 cm and this we don't want in that actually so what ideally is that excisional biopsy this is very important in that whenever there is a growth is there see go with the parallel to the you know lymphatic channels in that and it cover the area which is in a uh, entire elliptical shape in that and keep it margin of 1 to 3 millimeter, but we want in you know, operative is the margin of around 18 millimeter or 2 centimeter. Then comes to the radical excision that I don't want to get uh, yeah, come in that. Uh, this we have huh. now uh, for interesting thing is that in vulva there is a more than 90 percent they are squamous, but melanoma is also there 5 to 10 percent, basal cell carcinoma 2 percent, sarcoma 1 to 2 percent, package disease we have seen also and uh, bartholin which is rare one so uh, this is uh, we have ha huh, ha huh, see this is again very important uh, tumor type according to the who classification the tumor differentiation is very important to go further any prognosis so what is the depth and thickness of the invasion presence or absence of the vascular invasion and whether there is an absence of non neoplastic epithelial disease so whenever uh, the we take the you know specimen you have to see for the assessment of the margins distance from the epithelial to resection margin and i have already distance from the urethral resection margin and the vaginal resection margin and the anal resection i have shown in my that uh, picture in that uh, there has to be a distance where you can keep the tumor free margins uh, in cases of the lymph node dissected, lymph nodes not involved microscopically must be examined in their entirely with nodes larger than 5 millimeter. Uh, so what are the things which you can do is that ancillary studies. I do a frozen section with, you know, uh, whenever you, uh, I, I mean, we do it routinely in that. Immunohistochemistry here in vulva, not much of use, but if you go to the C endometrium, CS, uh, CA ovary, this is very important in that. A1, A3 micrometastasis in the sentinel node. And uh, these are the CK7 EMA primary vulval packets disease. And if you CK20 in the secondary. So basically, this is for the rare things. We uh, should not go much in detail in that. So what are the treatment approach depending on the result of the surgical staging? Early stages uh, defined as stage 1 and 2. The patient undergoes surgical excision, including adjuvant treatment based on the findings at the time of the surgery. Locally advanced disease and if there is an extensive thing is there, then you can optimal because this will be a, uh, this won't be a complete, but you can take it out the wide local excision and then put it for the radiotherapy in that. Then comes to the, uh, this package disease of the vulva. Packet disease of the vulva is a rare malignant condition, but it affects the extra primary packets disease. What we can tell is that this is the reddish brown, pinkish and all. All we know as an exam going, we used to see these pictures and uh, we used to diagnose with that. So wide local excision radiotherapy is preferred in that. So this is the one thing where I have taken it out for the vulvar melanoma because the people, they, I mean patient, they are coming with bluish and bluish this lesion. Then it becomes, you know, uh, you should keep a watch on that if it is growing and all these things and all. Sometimes we are having dark skin, so this can be a mist also in that. So in that melanoma also, blood decision of the groin and the wide local excision is very important, but this frequency will be more increased with the KIT mutations. So area removed in a partial vulvectomy depends upon this, this, and in a radical, you have to go to the posterior fortune and from the mons pubis, you should complete it out. So how to close the wound? That is the one very important. So we have to have a flap coverages. We take a local flap, at areas adjacent to the vulva, like uh, rhomboid flaps or the lotus petal flaps or the pudental thigh flap. But distant flaps of the gracilis, if there is a, this area is big one, then it becomes uh, the, uh, you know, plastic surgeon, uh, from, they do with the gracilis of the rectus abdominis muscle flap. This is just to, you know, uh, just to, uh, to know how uh, they could, may, I mean, uh, you may not be getting so much of cases in the, uh, in your practice and all those things, but this is the one very important thing is that 
to close the vulval lesions uh, in a either primary intention or the secondary intention it is very difficult because there is a wide gap there is a difficulty of approximation so it is better to go with the plastic surgery so what are the surgical principles wide radical local excision of the primary tumor with a minimum margin of 15 mm of the disease free tissue is often sufficient groin node surgery should be undertaken through the separate incisions and if unifocal tumors are less than 4 cm diameter, when there is no clinical suspicion of lymph node involvement, patients can be safely managed by removal the identifying the sentinel lymph node. So whenever there is a unifocal is there and you feel that the sentinel lymph node biopsy and if it is negative, then you don't have to go and uh, take it out the things in that. So radiation instead of surgery for the lymph node. See, I am in an institute where I have seen that we have taken the bilateral inguinal lymphadenectomy also with wide local excision of the uh, vulvectomy in that. Previously, we used to take a big butterfly incision and we used to do the, you know, radical vulvectomy and block the section of the lymph nodes. Patient used to get uh, very much wound dehiscence, sepsis and everything in that. But now there is so much of the development with the radiation uh, technologies, linear accelerator, then uh, you can uh, release of, you know, radiation at a nano and prevention of all these uh, damages to the surrounding structures with more of the technologies where you can uh, but there, there are the concept people are preferring radiation instead of the surgery for the lymph node. You know, women with positive growth nodes were randomized between the pelvic node surgery and radiation. This I have taken because uh, most of the people, your most of the you know uh, uh, patients, they are in a remote areas. They are going to the surgeons and they are taking it out. See, even uh, taking it out the lymph nodes, half of that. And then uh, posting it for the radiotherapy, that will uh, make the more borderline or the mortality rate. So basically, if it is not possible to take it out, pro do the proper staging, and then you can send such patients for the radiation. Then um, advanced disease, of course, for the radiation plus chemotherapy, and more advanced mo modified radical excision with the sentinel uh, node biopsy. So these are the things uh, where you can take the if tumors clinically confined to the vulva that we have kept the tumor free margin and take it out with vulvectomy. Separate incision has replaced end blocking minor node dissection. Previously, we used to take the you know the same continuation of the uh, this thing, but we don't do now. We take the separate incision at the inguinal and then we can go for in that uh, lymph node dissection. Ipsilateral inguinal node dissection has replaced with the bilateral and I totally agree with the, uh, this uh, because uh, we don't know, uh, you know, if suppose uh, this, uh, the cross lymphatics has been crossed and might be uh, the other side lymph nodes could be the positive one. So this is in picture. I, I just uh, took it for you for this. This is for the uh, wide local. This is for two centimeter margin. These are the, you know, separate incision sites in that. And then you have to uh, suture uh, properly in this. Uh, so radical vulvectomy, of course, uh, ha, cha, tumor involves the urethra. If the tumor involves the urethra, the distal one centimeter can be excised without affecting the uh, continuous. But suppose if it is more than uh, the extensively involved, then uh, you have to do with the other extensive or excentration surgeries if it is required. Or uh, if you feel that it is very advanced, uh, they ca it can go with the uh, radiotherapy. Uh, that is the one option and then uh, they can uh, post radiotherapy, they can think of the uh, any removal of the mass because that mass will get shrink with either chemo or the radiation. Plastic surgery is recommended. I have spoken is that using the local fasciocutaneous skin flaps, medial thigh flap to dental that I have already explained to you. Uh, so secondary intention and split skin grafts, I prefer with the split skin grafts in this. Uh, then uh, what are the guidelines for the inguinal femoral lymphadenectomy? Is the standard approach for the evaluation of the lymph nodes in women with the vulval cancer and inguinal node dissection alone is associated with the higher incidence of the groin recurrence. So basically you have to see for the pelvic lymph nodes also whether they have been involved or not in that. Pelvic lymphadenectomy is recommended when three or more positive unilateral groin lymph nodes are there and groin node dissection is performed to assess the nodes for the evidence of the metastasis. Uh, so these are the bilateral groin node dissection. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry, what happened? Yes, sorry. 
uh, then the large lateral tumor should probably also have a bilateral dissection. Uh, so it depends upon that. SLN biopsy is recommended in those patients who have early stage of the vulval cancer. I have already told you to if there is a unifocal lesion is there and small lesion is there, then one should go for this SLN biopsy. Uh, then we can do the mapping also with that detected using the uh, injected radiocolloid 99 uh, technetium or the methylene blue in that and you can see uh, the lesion before the operation in that. So radiation was superior and better survival if advanced stages is there. Uh, then uh, this is of the post-op radiation, depth of invisions, if margins they are less than 8 mm, positive surgical margins and more node development is there, I mean positivity. So either you can go for the primary treatment, uh, which can go for the 44 fraction size of around 1.7 uh, grays in that, yeah, 45 to 50 gray. We give with the 45 to 50 prophylactic dose also in that. And then uh, that is for the radiation and the chemo radiation in that. Uh, uh, then uh, chemotherapy, cisplatinum based, uh, that and fluoracil using regimes uh, actually. And other modalities, topical immunotherapy, uh, vaccines against HPV, photodynamic therapy, and um, uh, ultrasound surgical aspiration or the chemo preventive agents in that. Uh, this is about the, uh, in nutshell, uh, whenever there is clinical negative groin examination, then don't go for anything lymphonodectomy. But suppose there is a um, stage is the, uh, there more than two centimeter, then do the simple uh, uh, sentinel lymph node biopsy. If it is negative, don't do anything. If it is positive, then go for a inguinal femoral. And if you see that okay, when the positive nodes are found intraoperative and the central lesion is there, go for a bilateral lymph node. Okay. So, and if there is an involved groin nodes examination, the nodal debulking followed by the chemo radiation. And this is about the, um, just a few words about the Bartholin glands, famous carcinoma or the adenocarcinoma, you can get in that. And this is also very, extens very extensively involved in that. You have to do a surgical section with the bilateral inguinofemoral lymphadenectomy. Then basal cell carcinoma, uh, wide local exigen, radio preferred radiotherapy. So prognosis is depend upon that. How much is the you know, depth of invasion? How extensive is that? Advanced stage is there. When there is an inguinal or femoral lymph node, they are multiple involved. There is an extra capsular growth of the lymph node metastasis. And it depends upon that the five-year survival rate. Uh, we are doing it, you know, calculating with the stage-wise. Uh, screening, definitely there is nothing to screen unless there is a HPV infection. There is a minimal role of colposcopy in that. Uh, only colposcopy is useful for localizing, but signs are non-specific in that. So basically we go with the punch biopsy or the excisional biopsy in that to diagnose in that. Uh, this is the one thing uh, from my experience I have, we have done is that vulval carcinoma survival outcome and institutional experience. This I have been uh, published uh, this article where we have calculated the five-year survival rate with uh, FIGO staging type. Uh, so one was uh, stage one, 98%, stage two, 85%, stage uh, three, 74%, and stage four, around 31% where the groin uh, nodes, they were negative around 91% and groin positive, they were about 52% and pelvic, they were positive around 11%. So definitely uh, there is, uh, you know, if the patient, they are coming at early stages, there is definitely a chance that we can give a good quality of life or five-year survival rate. So in conclusion, vulval cancer is a rare disease because of the pathogenesis. Uh, surgery and radiotherapy are the main treatment modalities. The sentinel node biopsy represents a contemporary approach to the vulval cancer treatment and significantly reduces the morbidity. Improvements in treatment of vulval cancer contributed to the decreases of the morbidity among the uh, women. The surgical treatment is still standard treatment for the vulval cancer. The development of the minimally invasive surgical techniques is important in that the replacement of the inguinofemoral lymphadenectomy with this procedure significantly reduce the morbidity and improve the quality of life. So reconstruction, there is a road of uh, uh, this uh, radiotherapy, chemo radio, uh, other mobilities. And uh, uh, I think uh, this is about the fire survival rate. Uh, and this is thank you very much. I think in always uh, these things, prevention is better than the cure. And um, thank you very much. Uh, I will stop my screen share. And this is the...
<laughs> where uh, thank you so much this is a very you know uh, most of the gynecologists commonly they don't uh, uh, go for this uh, topic and all this but we are seeing the patients even with a young age with a, with the disease and uh, you were know so much of burning uh, itching cases they are coming and the age expectancy is advanced nowadays you know so many old um, ladies their patients they are coming with you know dryness is there it's very terrible the life has they are 68 70 80 year old with the diaper rashes are there contact dermatitis then uh, hyper you know uh, hypertrophic uh, vulva these things and they don't know at what point they will get uh, intraepithelial lesion that might uh, goes into the ca vulva also and at old stages we can't do anything much more for that also so um, good hygiene, uh, build up of immunity, proper nursing care, not using lot of soaps, irritants and uh, all these things. And if there is a persistent, uh, you know, itching is there, then one should look for all the any infections, HPV infections and all those things. Or any doubt, any tumor is there, any macule, bluish color, anything is there, change of color, observe it, patient is coming to you. If you feel any doubt is there, take a biopsy and see for what lesion is there. So thank you very much. Thank you, patient hearing. And thank you all of you for your loving attention. I hope I have not bored you all. Thank <laughs> you, thank you, thank you. Is, uh... No, no, the top. You, thank you, dear Rajeshri. You have covered each and every aspect. Such yes. elaborately, you have covered all the lesions. Rajeshri, now I am having some questions. These questions are by me. I have not seen yes. now the... Achha, these days, we are seeing a lot of patients of lichen sclerosis. Huh? Yes. So... Especially more in the diabetic patients, usually yes, yes. menopausal diabetic females. Mm -hmm. uh, see, I'm not against anyone, but in our OPD daily these days, so many companies are coming with the lasers. And have, though I'm not against the laser, but I am I am not a laser person. I am it's much more believing on the other treatments. So uh, what's your opinion? Do you think that this laser is very beneficial for the lichen sclerosis of uh, sclerosis patients? And in being a India, in, in India, all of our patients can't bear such much of cost. Though I practice in the corporate with the corporate class. So still, I think the laser's cost is very much. And what's your opinion about the results with the treating of the lasers in the patients with lichen and sclerosis? I'll tell you one important thing is that if you go for a lichen sclerosis or lichen planus, that is the effect of some of the things, you know. So yeah. first you have to see for the systemic disorders, like you pointed out diabetes, but there are autoimmune, proce autoimmune yeah. processes are there, autoimmune diseases are there, even the thyroid disease in that and a vulval dystrophy. So these conditions, first you have to diagnose it and then we have to treat it in that, you know. But keeping all these uh, away um, and uh, treating with the laser, it will be, you know, masking the, uh, uh, the primary cause of the uh, disease. Uh, that is what I mean to say because the lichen sclerosis, planus, simplex, chronicus, all these, they are a manifestation of one of the systemic disease. So I think blindly one should not go for a laser. That is one thing. Second important thing is that uh, with um, it is very expensive. Very few people they are having with the lasers and all those things. So I feel personally that you should treat the cause, treat the this thing and use of steroids with the topical and that helps the patients with that. But suppressing with the laser without diagnosing it, she may end up with the vulval intraepithelial neoplasm. Is it something like that we have to uh, specify with any kind of the steroid preparation not in the diabetic patients? No, is there are some you can use diabetes. for the diabetic also, topical hydrocortisone. Ma'am, we also received one question. Uh, one minute, I will take him, I'm taking one. Nishan, wait, in connection of that only, I am asking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, okay, sorry. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, no, no. topical uh, hydrocortisone, uh, that is uh, the area, low topical steroids also yeah. you can use in that actually. Yeah. Uh, whenever there are extensive lesions, she is non-diabetic, even uh, sometimes you may require for the oral uh, low dose steroids also. Yeah, but very rarely. So we, can, yeah, yeah, but we have to explain patient properly yes, that we are giving course. for the local application, not local for the oral intake. Not, not, no. So, 
And now I think uh, Dr. Jain has asked one question. The similarly question is in my mind also that your opinion in these patients regarding the use of the vaginal wash. <laughs> this is every time they ask me. Uh -huh. See, vaginal wash, there are the two things in that. One, if there is a pH, you know, that says. But yeah. suppose for the alteration of pH and chronic um, infl infection and inflammation is there, there and uh, uh, allergic to the irritant and soaps in that. If Suppose if you use uh, mild uh, vaginal wash, then it is useful. But nowadays, even the vaginal wash, they are recommended for the young girls also, young patients also, reproductive age. So that will be the extensive. Because uh, the women, they have their inherent immunity in their uh, vaginal uh, pH and uh, mucosa and evil nature. So that one should not get uh, tamper and it should not get overuse with the all these uh, washes. That's so, correct. And even yes. with the where I'll tell you in my experience also where uh, some of the patients where we use as a treatment for this for that also acted as a irritant for them. So what suits to the patient is a different thing. Yes, very so generally uh, yeah. the people they says you know. Uh, in a day, three, four times, use soaps and that will be clean, clean and all. No, simple water also uh, very useful for that. Yeah. And one should look for any seborrheic dermatitis, fungal infections, uh, crural or the fold, in the fold and all. Uh, that is very uh, important. These are the things and the hygiene should be maintained. Yeah. Uh, very true. Totally agreed. Yes. But in some patients we are advising. Yes, Actually, yes. I am the advising. I'm Because see, uh, sorry to say, but these days so many youngsters are coming. They clearly clear cut giving the history of yes. the polygamy. Clear yes. cut they are giving the history. Ma'am, yesterday we are with someone else. Today we are going with him. Today we are going, uh, today we are going for the dating with someone else. Is it not like that this yesterday is what happened? Is some infection will be transmitted to me? Hmm. So, yes, in some patients, of course, I am advising yeah, for the vaginal wash. Yeah, yes, yes, but yes. not for that three, four exactly. times, at least once. A, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Now, taking the next question uh, related to this genital warts, we are seeing a lot of patients of genital warts these days. So, mm -hmm. your opinion with this HPV vaccination, how are you finding the results? Huh. Uh, see, HPV vaccination, just it has been come and the person should not get exposed. That is the one thing. When the patient, they are coming with a genital wart, that means already it has been infected. And we don't know the strains, you know. Generally, uh, the low risk strains, uh, those are there with the HPV infection, with immunity, you know. There is one uh, years, in years of time, it resolves on its own around 70 to 80 percent of the thing. But the high risk, which is there, 16, 18, 31, 33, 45, and all those are so high risk one. So that that has to be, you know, observed and treated very carefully in that. But HPV vaccination, vaccination uses when you are not exposed to the things, you know, prior to the exposure, we are vaccinating and getting the immunity developed in ourselves. What we have done in a COVID, you know. So once we are positive with that, then uh, how much vaccine it helps, and that is doubtful. But uh, some patients, they want also, and some of the clinicians, they are giving also. The idea behind is that ki, this vaccination, it may help to the with the other strains. There are two types of the vaccines where we will get a bivalent and the quadrivalent one. So quadrivalent with, the, um, uh, with that, uh, it acts with the four strains. So that is how the thing is that. So you have to think individualize the case and uh, we have to tell them sorry sorry huh no, life no. of life of us is very very na huh? any time the patient can call hmm? so uh, yes as dr rajeshri has told See, friends, these days we are having this Gardasil 9. Miss, I, yeah, miss, yeah, 9 is also available, uh, which is covering approximately the 9 viruses. If your patient is giving you the history of clear-cut monogamy, no problem. But if the patient is having a history of polygamy and all that, yes, as Dr. Rajeshri has mentioned very clearly, uh, giving vaccine prior to the sexual exposure is very, very good. 
but none uh, not like that if patient is having a exposure after that also we can give at least some protection will be there as dr rajeshri has also clearly mentioned because there are more than 200 types of hpv viruses are reported which can cause the cervical cancer now we are having a vaccine for covering the nine strains so at least kuch nahi se kuch to behtar hai to if and if patient's pocket permits then definitely the main the main factor is the cost because the cost is too high so then sometimes the patients uh, avoid uh, they say that the cost is too high ma'am we can't take so there is one question by dr rupali jain regarding the use of the betadine washes <laughs> Betadine washes uh, basically, um, uh, if there is infection is there, then uh, not washes. It's a it's yeah. a douche basically. Douche will go. I mean, yeah, no, no. Why not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Valva, uh, so you cannot use so much of the yeah. betadine because it will be either stain to the clothes and secondary irritation. Yeah, yeah. There is that. Yeah. But uh, if there is an infection, then uh, but it you should not use concentrated. That also it has to be diluted with the. Uh, this uh, normal saline and uh, yeah, clear water and all, and then it can be used in that if it is required. I am not very for of that actually. Yeah. So, but if it Thank is required, you. you can use in that. Uh, Doctor Ritu, uh, I just okay. wanted to ask this uh, Garda cell 9, you said. Uh, yes. What is the yet to come? No, no, I am giving. I am giving to my patients. इतना Lot, lot of studies are there in the support of that also. That is covering as Gardasil. Uh, uh, this means four. The quadrivalent vaccine is covering the four strains. Now this nine wala is covering nine strains. So, no, but the main. Wait, wait, wait! I'm causing... covering. I'm covering. I'm covering. I'm covering. Now the strains yes. which is covering the most commonly the wards. That is more in the favor of the wards also. So and uh, different ex. अभी चलिए मैं एक नेक्स्ट टॉक लेती हूँ इसके ऊपर ही से आई आई विल मेक एंड रेखा मैम देर इज वन थिंग इज दैट यू नो द कंसेप्ट ऑफ कमिंग ऑफ दिस वैक्सीन इज दैट की देर इज ऑलवेज अ डिस्कशन विद द्लानर्स ऑफ दिस वैक्सीनेशन इज दैट there are so many strains you know 200 strains yes. 60 subtypes are there which is very commonly involved with the female genital tract in that among yes. that we have developed with the low risk intermediate risk and high risk in that the low risk and okay. the intermediate risk what they says is that if low risk if they have been uh, infected in that so with the immunity they get resolved in a years of time who knows you know many patients they yes, might yes, having yes. a word side it has been uh, gets resolved in that the more worried about that where they have been uh, diagnosed around a csr which in that subtypes where on the dna dna hybridization and the pcr take this around 16 18 31 33 45 and uh, some more 52 it's like that 51 you know? 50, yes yes correct 51 and 55 yeah 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 55 So yeah. these are the strains where in that. So first company came with the bivalent, you know. Yeah. Then they have yes. come with the quadrivalent. Now the technology yeah. has involved with the involving the more strains in that. That is how it has come with the this thing. Suppose this day they have taken the in, uh, vaccine of nine, and if it is come on the tenth, then it will not protect. <laughs> so that is the, <laughs> that's true. That so is the, that is the cross the protectivity. Same, because the I, same question, na, the doctor Rajeshri, the patients asking. Yes. Advice, na. because a 10850 is not yes. a small it's a huge no, amount ha huh? so uh. kisi ko bhi aap bolo aap koi aapke paas dikhane ke liye aapne bolte hai aapko 10 matlab 10850 11000 hi pakad lo na matlab ki aapka itna mehanga yes. vaccine laga rahe ho to patient aisa puchte ma'am humko kya sach mein cancer ho sakta hai kya sach mein aisa hoga agar hum lagayenge to humko isse protection milega kitne percent assured hai see we can't give any assured uh, yeah dr rupali the doses is same the 026 less than If the age is less than fourteen, uh, then only two shots, zero and six. 
बट एब्रॉड में जो चल रहा है तो एब्रॉड में दे आर गिविंग ओनली टू डोजेज मैंने कल ही इसके बारे में पढ़ा सो बिकॉज एब्रॉड में वो टोटली दो डोज दे रहे हैं गार्डासिल लाइन के जीरो एंड सिक्स दे रहे हैं पर हमारे यहाँ अभी जो गाइडलाइंस है उसमें जीरो टू सिक्स ही है दे आर ट्राइंग टू इंक्लूड द इंडियन अकेडमी ऑफ दिडेटेशो वेन इट विल कम टू आवर नेचुरल नेशनल इम्यूनाइजेशन शेड्यूल प्रोग्राम then uh, it will maybe the, the cost most. will come yeah the cost, cost will, will come, come with yeah, that yeah, 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 but yeah. Uh, you have to explain to the patient that ki do this 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 is not a 100% protection to them either they can use the barrier condoms or they go for the uh, not to go for the uh, you know the promiscuity or the polygamy in that because this is not a 100% protection that she took the vaccine and uh, they do anything and it uh, yes. they will protect no, but uh, bus one last thing these nine strains are uh, uh, like high risk strains taking... ma'am high risk strains they have picked up acha nine nine okay nine. okay okay theek hai thank you thank you char to wohi hai 6 11 16 18 yes char to wohi hai pehle wale 6 11 16 18 एडिशनल लाला है थर्टी वन थर्टी थ्री थर्टी वन थर्टी थ्री थर्टी वन थर्टी थ्री फोर्टी फाइव फोर्टी एट फिफ्टी वन फिफ्टी फाइव ओ ग्रेट आपने तो याद कर लिया मतलब मैं देती हूँ ना मैं तो देती हूँ पेशेंट को तो मेरे पास मेरे पास दिमाग मेरे पास सब दिमाग खाने वाले लोग होते हैं ना सब में पढ़ पढ़ के आते हैं ना तो उनको तुमको अपडेट होना बहुत जरूरी है गुड थिंग वेरी रेयर Uh, this thing, but everyone knows so much of other things. But so you are really well versed, and it's my uh, you know luck that I came across and heard so many you know new things, and really hats off to you. Hats off to you. Mm-hmm. Very, very, passionate. Very, very passionate. Very passionate about the knowledge sharing. Very passionate. Yes, yes. And very knowledgeable. Uh, uh, very knowledgeable. That's it. That's yes. the correct word. Yes. <laughs> मेरे शो में सब knowledgeable लोगों को ही बुलाती हूँ मैं. चलो. खुद knowledgeable है. पर आपको बहुत रेयर मतलब रेयर टॉपिक में भी बहुत नॉलेज है सो दैट इज मतलब यू एंड वेरी नाइसली डेलिवर्ड वेरी नाइस थैंक यू सो मच मैम ऐसा है कि नाउ डेज यू नो सी एवरीथिंग इज इन द गूगल बट विथ एक्सपीरियंस सपोज यू हैव एक्सपीरियंस सो मच वेन एवर यू टॉक और डॉक्टर रितु और एनी ऑफ देम दे डू टॉक दे टॉक विथ द एक्सपीरियंस दैट इज मोर इम्पॉर्टेंट इन दैट यू नो Uh, so this platform is very good i always like it that ki where there is a definitely a uh, clinical oriented or patient oriented discussion is there which will be useful for the practitioners also and academicians yeah thank you yeah. thank so, you uh, hats up to ritu i hats up to <laughs> ritu ne bara bara you yes, started yes, yes. <laughs> your brain child ha because uh, she is the pioneer of this Yes, yes. Thank yes. you, thank you, thank you. Made my day, <laughs> Rekha ji <laughs> no, and no. Dr. Rajshri. Yes. Ah. Acha, thank you, Rupali, for joining and for such compliments. Acha, now I am having one more question, uh, Dr. Rajshri. Uh, hmm. When you are showing the slides about this resection, only all the questions I am asking. No one else is having any question because the topic was so interesting. I am not even hearing you. I am so upset. मतलब I was totally listening, not even a one thing. Uh, so, uh, regarding the resection, uh, what you told about the tumor-free margin should be how yes, much? Two centimeters. Yeah. Uh, see, yeah. I'll tell you. Ki in yeah. every, see, I am in a. I am doing gynec oncology since last so many years, uh, two de- two decades. So whenever there is there, the always the in either you go to the CA cervix, you are. Taking the paravaginal, paravitreum, paravaginal cup. The tumor-free margin has to be 
टू सेंटीमीटर या मोर देन टू सेंटीमीटर दैट इज द हेल्दी थिंग्स यू नो दैट मीन्स फ्रॉम दैट द हेल्दी थिंग्स आर देर दैट मीन्स यू आर नॉट कीपिंग द ट्यूमर और द रेसिड्यूल ट्यूमर इन द बॉडी which is at least visible to your eyes and uh, your with your tactile sensation that is very important suppose if you keep a small amount of the tumor even that residual tumor that will give the recurrence of the disease or the reoccurrence of the disease then you will not get a um, optimal correction you know and there the five year survival rate will be more in that and mortality morbidity will be increasing that's why it yeah. is very 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 okay. important in that in all our things you know this is the this is the branch where you need a more precision in life always so whenever um, uh, i study the cases before even touching to the patient also i see the mri plates i see where the tumor and all those things and all and then we plan the things You are great, my dear. No, no, no. I am not great. I just <laughs> want that. I, I'll tell you. Um, uh, for this uh, patient, they are like uh, soul to me. I always feel um, the work is worship, and for me, the patients are God only. Their uh, uh, services to them is that I am uh, extending the services to the Almighty. Uh huh. So I. मुझे वो बहुत दिल से फ्रॉम माय सोल इट कम्स दैट की एज फार एज पॉसिबल आई शुड ट्राई टू डू द बेस्ट फॉर देम सो इट इज फ्रॉम द इनर ऑलवेज इट्स लाइक दैट आई एम लाइक दैट ओनली सो इट शोज ऑन योर फेस आल्सो डॉक्टर आश्री योर सिंसियरिटी शोज ऑन योर फेस यस यस मुझे बहुत रेखा मैडम मुझे बहुत दुख होता है कुछ पेशेंट को ये होता है ना सो आई ऑलवेज यू नो थिंक आई ऑलवेज रीड आल्सो in that uh, um, uh, i sit with the papers investigations and wo ek pata nahi but that has come in my uh, uh, this ah. inside it come it is it comes from within actually so that you so are you are really i like ha ah, blessed by god that is yeah blessed i am blessed surgeon in operation theater nahi nahi very good always very blessed good. always blessed because whatever in my 24 years of the services i have around 60% patients i operated those patients who has been not touched by uh, many of the uh, people outside and extensively in my that actually so uh, we operated like 30 kg tumors ritu uh, we will keep one on fibroid session with experience practical also yes ritu hello कोविड आई ऑपरेटेड सो मेनी केसेस फॉर अयर पेशेंट है and they have not gone to the doctors you know because of this uh, uh, this thing covid because of the scare and fear and most of the huge huge ovarian tumors they have undergone torsion and they become gangrenous such uh -huh. why in 2025 in a 3 4 months time <laughs> then i made a presentation out of it i published yeah. <laughs> you know covid which and how the things has been got you know the uh, women used to sit at home though there is a pain i see they used to sit sit and uh, they have not gone to the doctors and it has gone torsion how many torsions you can say 6 7 8 like this gangrenous blackening of thing everything so it is nice so these are the oh. practical experiences hello thank you thank you uh, thank you dear rajeshri and yes, thank you thank dear you. friends those who have joined it's already 10 uh, just can i ask one short question one uh, yes 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 
अच्छा डॉक्टर राशि इफ वुमेन सेइंग शी इज प्रेजेंटिंग सॉरी ऑन एग्जामिनेशन वी फाइंड दैट इट इज अ वाइट डिस्कलरेशन तो व्हाट इज द व्हाट इज द मोस्ट कॉमन लीजन व्हेन इट इज वन इज द सी एक तो वन कुड बी अ क्रॉनिक इन्फ्लेमेटरी थिंग्स दैट इज वन थिंग लिकोप्लेकिक पैच मे बी दैट इज द सेकंड थिंग or um, uh, if you feel that ki there is a discoloration of a uh, skin that could be a uh, with intense pruritis uh, that uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, in some cases repeat, it will uh, be doctor actually please repeat i didn't get the uh, there was a ma'am this call, could huh? be a normal this could be a leukoplakic patch you know in cases okay. of the vitiligo you will get in that that is one thing second thing is that ki there are some uh, chronic infection and inflammation where you will get a hypopigmented uh, um, uh, patches in that actually. okay and uh, suppose with sclerosis the ivory patch is there then that could be early lichen sclerosis also in that so okay. we have to observe it give for a tra- treatment for her if she is itching go for antihistaminic or the topical steroids is there low dose and uh, it subsides that is fine but if it is been increasing in size and if it is going with the sclerotic changes or if there is a any growth is there uh, macule papule like and then you can uh, biopsy even within 3 4 months no but uh, the, the matlab what i was asking for the lady it didn't have any growth nothing and it was very chronic types and uh, so uh, steroid for how long will you give no generally this is local steroids for around 2 uh, to 3 weeks in that and after yeah, that yeah. if it is not being resolved that that is the one thing what i am saying in that ki don't okay. push up with the steroids or don't push up with ah, the yes uh, yes all yes. the things because that could be one of the things that may go to the because vulval dystrophy yes, yes, is yes. one of the who is one of the precursor of uh, vulval malignancies हाँ हाँ आई एडवाइज हर बट द पेशेंट वॉज सिंग दिस इज देयर फॉर नाउ सिक्स इयर्स सो I thought it was 6 years so, we will observe nahi to ek bar biopsy kar ke rakhna there are one case like that only ki we had a, a such case and i said hey, we should biopsy it in biopsy nothing has come in that but after 3 4 years back again she came with that and they, there we had a borderline uh, vulva tumor in that ha ha okay okay all uh-huh. patients are not agree for the biopsy also no that's why i think rekha is saying all patients ha, are not ready for it मतलब That could be a मुझे लगता है hypopigmented leukoplakic patch or uh, dystrophy. Dystrophy could be early beginning of the lichen sclerosis also. Okay, okay. मतलब mm-hmm. vulval dystrophy समझ लीजिए एक चीज़ है ना थोड़ा vulval dystrophy हाँ हाँ and she हाँ. and she was complaining of itching also. हाँ 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 हाँ
So this Otherwise, is, uh, huh? I mean, and it it goes from her mind also, no? Once there is a clear, everything is clear in the mind. Ah, uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor Riku. Thanks a lot. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Rekha, ma'am. Ah, thank you, Doctor Ashley. Doctor Sarita, this is nine to forty-five years of age. So I think I will take one lecture on this cervical cancer vaccination. No problem. Yes, 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 no. yes. So yes, be ready. Yes. We can take on the next week only. Next week yes. only we will discuss. I won't make the yes, yes. I, I will also join. Yes. I will also okay, join. I will you. ask you the questions. Yes, no problem. You can ask me anytime. Huh? Open dialogue with <laughs> I'll ask the Haan. questions. डॉक्टर इतना सब पक्का होता है पक्का अगर नॉलेज है तो पक्की है इनकी यस यस नहीं नहीं आई एम हार्ड वर्किंग वेरी सिंसियर वेरी नाइस टुडे यू आर आइकॉन आई एम नॉट आइकॉन डॉक्टर राजेश हां मी वेरी ट्रू वेरी ट्रू आई फील इज दैट व्हाटएवर लिटिल वी नो दैट वी शुड शेयर विद द वर्ल्ड दैट इज द थिंग बिकॉज़ दिस नॉलेज इज नॉट आवर सेल्फ सो हां नहीं नहीं ट्रू नॉलेज ऑलवेज इंक्रीजेस बाय शेयरिंग Yes, so friends yes. with this we are going to wind up for today so let me know which are the topics you want to take in the upcoming sessions so i will try to arrange a discussion on that topics only so let me know a uh, special thanks to our special hey, friends who have joined across the geography dr samuel from nigeria dr chinwe dr mona from kerio yeah so many doctors have joined from outside also kuch logo ko hi dekh pa rahi hu main so and thank you nishant and thank you sahiti and thank you ma'am welcome dear chalo with this we will wind off huh? hmm yes yes thank yes, you bye good night thank you rashmi ma'am thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you bye rekha ji it was very bye informative bye. thank you for joining okay bye bye thanks a lot good night